Uh, sometime was it Monday, September 11th? We get a normal full week of learning in our first real quiz coming up on Friday because your previous quiz was definitely not a real one, but this yeah. Friday is this real her. And B points are updated since that was the only thing to update from last week to this week. Last week, I know I felt bad I was not able to give you guys any homework really, so this week we are going to fix it by having homework almost every single day, but it's also not really homework because you're supposed to get them done in class unless you go to your happy place. So in theory, you should have no homework this week unless you're just a special little bumpkin. Today, well, I'll say last Friday, we did the Lady and the Tiger elements. Today we're going to do one about a story about a guy who goes fishing and almost dies. Because that would be awful. Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at a non-fiction article about whether it's okay to let uh, junior high kids get tattoos. Wednesday, we're going to learn about how to write in a paragraph ourselves. Thursday, you guys are going to have to write an in-class paragraph. Right? Every seventh grader has to do it. Friday, you're going to take a quiz. And it's going to cover all the learning we've been doing this week. Saturday, you're not going to be here, so everything is good. So we should have quite the entertaining week leading into all that stuff. Bye. So Friday's quiz is not on Canvas. It is going to be on an app that we use called Socrative. If you've not downloaded Socrative yet, you're going to want to by Friday. I will send it out on a remind today. I'll send it out on a remind again Thursday. We'll have you guys download it in class on Thursday. It's a free app. It's on the little school store thing. There is a teacher version and a student version. You are going to want the student version. I mean. You can download the teacher version, and then you can create your own quizzes and feel like a big kid. Uh, but you're going to want the student version as far as the learning class. And then I'll explain how that works to you guys and stuff like that on Friday. Then, let's see, Friday, did we get through the internal and external of Lady and the Tiger? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We should have that done for you guys. So, yay. So for internal conflict, what decision is the prince made? What word do we have to use in an internal conflict? Not. Or. What word should we not use? Not. not. Directions. So what decision does the princess have to make? Or. To let the lady die or to choose. Which, which, door. which door. Lady or left? Which lady or the tiger? Or. So what I was listening point for to tiger, was point to the there tiger. You go. making sure you had or and then making sure you had two separate choices. Right door or not right door. I put the kill boy or... Get the hot chick. Right door. Gardner's right son. Door. What decision does he make? Trust door. the princess. Right door or not right Listen to the princess. Not trust the princess. Ricardo, I'm hoping you'll give a correct answer since all those other kids failed epically. Left door or right door? No. Is it correct? Listen to the princess or choose your own door. Unfortunately, Reed is correct. He never chooses a door. If you look at the end of that story, it says as soon as she points, he immediately goes to that door without thinking and opens it. So he never decides left door or right door. His decision is do you trust the princess or make your own choice? Because that was what he had to decide going into it. He was not picking between the two doors. And then external, what things were fighting each other? Princess and the king. King or son? There. Again, you're making me say the words. Good job, Reed. He was the one that actually used the word versus. King versus boy. King versus girl. Uh, I don't want those because apparently he hates the boy, which yeah. makes the girl sad. Or boy versus the two doors or something else you may have come up with from there. And then don't forget at the very bottom, there is a spot that says external conflict explanation. That is the area most kids lose points on because apparently reading directions is hard. So I figured I'd throw it out there to try and help you make sure you do your explanation thing. Matthew! Do we have to put both oh, for the internal I'm just making sure you know there's multiple ones that happen. Okay. Read! I'm kind of confused what's right there. For which part? The external conflict. Why is this important? So why, which external conflict did you go with? Why is that important to the story? So they can get a plot. No. As in, why do we care if the king hates the boy? What does that impact the story? Oh, the two doors. Why? Because the gardener's son said I love you to the princess. There you go. Let's deal with our new story for today. So if you look on right-hand side, we're going to go through and take care of all of that. 
This is your homework that is due Thursday. I mean, in theory, you'll have it done by the end of class, much like we did with Lady and Tiger, but I figure officially you'll get credit for it coming up on Thursday. So it should be this side that's over there. Again, I will give you number three for plot. You just have to figure out one and five, and then we can help you out two and four. So you figure it out how it very begins, and figure out how it ends, and then I think everything else as we go through, you should be able to figure out from there. Matei! I wonder if the back of the class and check our answers. It depends on how much time we have. Some classes have time, some classes don't have time. If we have time, I'm more than happy to. If we don't have time, then we get to find out how well you did on Friday's quiz. And we get to sort of go from there. Hi, Julian! It looks nice. Thank you. It looks kind of weird in the middle. I've never had long hair prior to this year. I've always had, like, short buzz cut. Yeah. And so I just started growing it out last year, and I've not had it in forever, so it's weird. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Keep it like that. Wait. No, no, no. Bangs. <laughs> no, no, no. Bangs. Go get bangs. You should get bangs. Go turn emo. <laughs> well, we'll get the guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not like, used to it. I meant to do it this weekend, but I ran out of time. Then, let's look at story. As much fun as a hair timeout was. So, very beginning of story. There's a little <laughs> blippy thing that's over there. This is talking about archaic pronouns. So, the way archaic pronouns work. Um, the pronouns we have now, he, she, they, it, stuff like that. <clears throat> archaic. The word archaic by itself means from a long time ago, things we no longer use. As an example, this is an archaic communication device. Have any of you guys ever actually physically touched one of these devices? How'd you get a picture of my phone? Have yeah, you guys ever actually talking. used one of these to make a phone call? Look at that. You guys are old people. And so these are archaic, meaning the fact that we no longer use things like this. This story is going to use the pronouns thee, thou, and thy. These are pronouns we no longer use at all, meaning much like this type of phone, they're sort of dead to us. Like kids. Like kid, no, just your souls. And so in the story, you have to pay attention to which character is using them. So as an example, it shows power over people. Uh, teachers could use it to students. Uh, thou needs to get out thy homework or I get to beat thee with a stick. Huh? It shows you have power over someone. So if you use thee, thou, thy, it shows that you have power over someone. Mm -hmm. If Dr. Thorpe, my boss, came in, she could use it to me. They're like, Mr. Broviak, is thou beating thy students with a stick? And I'm like, yes, I am. And she's like, that's bad on thee. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And so she could use it to me. But if you used it to me, that would be disrespectful because it shows that you have power over me, which you don't. So if you're like, Mr. Broviak, what is thou wearing on thy tie? It makes thee look nice. Like, oh, you sassy little child. You. <laughs> and so that'd be your way of being said. Just like I could not use that to Dr. Thorpe without getting in trouble and be like, thou is such a good principal. I love what thee does. And then she'd get mad. So, one, if you want to entertain yourself, when you go home tonight to the big people in your house and they're making dinner, you can go, Mother, thou has done a wonderful job with thy dinner. I love what thee has done. And she'll be like, oh, that's so sweet. You're like, <laughs> And you can just sit there and giggle and know the fact that you've just sassed your parents because it's a way of showing that you have power over them. Or, I'm guessing your other teachers have no idea either, so you can just start throwing this around in class all the time and just sound like you're fancy and be like, what is thou assigning us? And you can just sit there and giggle. <laughs> Hi, Matei. Yeah. See, I knew it was right there like, Mr. Probiak, I'm pulling on my sassy pants. <laughs> I'm going to buckle them on. Hi, Julian. Um, are we going to take turns at reading the story? Eventually, someday, we'll get there. And when I start to trust your guys' reading ability more, yeah. Well, well, that was a good teacher. <laughs> Hi, Ramos. Ramos. What if people start using these pronouns just because of students? Uh, well, then they would no longer become archaic. But it would be didic because those kids would be dead. <laughs> Kelly! Yeah. Would that attract me to be a point if we use those pronouns? Depends on how sassy you feel like being. Hi, Alex. Oh, what if we already use these pronouns? By the way, some of you do. There is a book that many of you guys read on Sundays that use these words. Bible? Yeah. yeah. When it's like, thou shall not kill, thou shall not smack a baby. And so Aww. it's supposed to be the idea that 
big guy, girl, turtle, whatever you believe in, is speaking down to you. And so it's the idea that they have power over you. Same way. Back to our story. All right. As we get into it, you should be able to figure out main character right away, and you're going to be able to figure out setting, when, where, stuff like that. Beginning part of plot, you should figure out. I'm going to go through like the first column and then stop because there's a good point where there's a thing happening. And I have Brovi art, and I brought in a show and tell item today too that goes along with the story. Oh no, on a Monday even. I ate it. Are you going to have Rovia art during the story? Like he does just that. that. Aiden hit his head this morning. It's okay. He's getting better already. He needs hospital. There was once upon a time a fisherman so old and so poor that he could scarcely manage to support his wife and three children. He went every day to fish very early in the morning. And each day he made a rule not to throw his nets more than four times. He started out one morning by moonlight and came to the seashore. He undressed and threw his nets, and as he was drawing them towards the bank, he felt a great weight. Now he thought he had caught a large fish, and he felt very pleased. But a moment afterwards, seeing that instead of a fish, he only had in his nets the body of an old rotted donkey, he was much disappointed. Upset with having such a bad haul, once he had mended his nest, which the carcass had broken in several places, he threw them a second time. In drawing them in, he again felt a great weight, so that he thought they were full of fish. But he only found a large basket full of rubbish. He was much annoyed. Oh, fortune! He cried, do not trifle thus with me, a poor fisherman who can hardly support his family. So saying, he threw away the rubbish, and after having wasted, washed his nets clean of the dirt, he threw them for the third time, but he only drew in stones, shells, and mud. He was almost in despair. Then he threw his nets for the fourth time. When he thought he had a fish, he drew them in with a great deal of trouble. There was no fish, however. But he found a golden container, which by its weight seemed to be full of something. And he noticed that it was fastened and sealed with lead, with the impression of a king's seal smashed into the top of it. He was delighted. I will sell it to the metal foundry, he said. With the money I shall get for it, I shall buy a bushel of wheat. Time out. So, so far, let's see what we have. Where is our story taking place? Earth. Be more specific. The beach. A long time. Beach. beach, a law next to a? Kingdom. Lake. Sure. Sand. A body of water. Works for me. I was going to go to the sea, but body of water. So it's a beach or area next to a body of water. Um, when throughout all of time, past, present, future. Long time ago. Evidence. It says it. Archaic. Thee thou, thee thou thus. That's from me telling you about the archaic pronouns. If you didn't know that, is there evidence? Once, it says once upon a time. Is there you go. First one. I would take that one. Oh, and what time of day? Night. Night. Where's Moonlight. your evidence? Moonlight. 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 Moonlight works for me. Early morning, says he goes out by, oh, and who is the he we're talking about? Fisherman. Right there in the title. Our fisherman does not go fishing with a fishing pole. He uses a different type of fishing device. Net. And so this would be, have you ever seen where you're like, you're next to the shore and you have a big net that has weights on it and you just go, hockadoo, oh, yeah. and you throw it, that's the official oh, fishing term, hockadoo, and you throw it out, see, you're fishing already, and then it goes in the water and then you chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, bring it back. So I thought I did a pretty good job is that of you? showing a guy fishing with nets. Feels like I nailed it right there. That is a picture of me. Yes, that was me when I used to. That's very bald. Yes. That's you. Wait, that's Total. you. Yes, absolutely me. Another no. random person on the internet. You said you never grew your own. So first time he throws out nets, what does he catch? Donkey. Which is weird. I have no idea why there's a dead donkey floating in the water or how that's the first thing he catches, but apparently, dead donkey carcass. What if it's alive? Well, it would be, but it says dead donkey carcass. Oh. I'm assuming it was alive at one point, and it decided to go for a little donkey swim, and then realized donkeys can't swim, 
And the donkey's like, I chose poorly. <laughs> the second time, I see it, I'm just, I, when I find a reason to yell at Miriam, I'll let Miriam know. It'll probably be the first time ever. Then from there, our second time is going to be rubbish, rubbish which is just a pile of trash and useless rubbish. things. Uh, you could also write down the seventh graders. For the third one, it's going to be a basket of that was the rubbish. rubbish. We already did that Mud, one. rocks, and there you dirt. Go. Mud, rock, shells, other things that we cannot eat, no matter how much you try to chew them. And the fourth time, wait, how many times is he throwing his net? Four. 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 And this is the last time. And does he catch food? No. no. Oh. A golden container. I couldn't find a good That's picture of a golden you. container, so I went for jelly. And I figure it's as good as gold because no. jelly's delicious. Yeah, yeah. 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 I did bring in a container. This one is also not gold, but it is as good as gold because it has Star Wars on it, which means it's worth as much to gold to me, regardless of what facial expression you may give me with your dismissal. So from there, why, if you can't eat one of these, no matter how much you try, and I'm not going to challenge some of you, why is he still excited about it? You can sell it. And you can still make your fat cash, and he can feed his kids. I don't know if only there was a story that we could. Oh wait, there is. Yeah. Ramos. What the heck did he have so many kids if he knew he couldn't afford it? You can write him a letter and ask. I have what not the slightest kid? idea. Can I order his Julian? Is that cover person said that? Said that? All right. I apologize for calling on you, Aiden. What's inside that container? Oh that my one. goodness! Just ask that. Oh, you guys are the it's best. It's the same thing. Oh, I, I love wake teaching. Up. Thanks. Hey, Continuing. I know. I bet we're going to find out what's inside both containers in a moment with the joy of this thing called reading. the future. Oh, reading. Wow. He examined the jar on all supper. By the way, you should also now have part one of plot because you should be able to figure out how the story started. And then the next part of plot will be the end. Point of view, you should be able to figure out the difference between first and third. Just zoom tight. But if you're going beyond that, you might need to wait from there. <clears throat> He examined the jar on all sides. He shook it to see if it would rattle, but he heard... Oh, sorry. Dang it. You guys distracted me. When it said there was a seal on top, because they're going to talk about the seal in a moment, it again does not mean like art, 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 art kind of seal. Uh, it means that there's a thing smashed into the top of this one. So I, I used the king of movies, uh, and I figure it's the same idea that he smashed into the top. His has the seal of a king. This has the seal of the king of movies. <laughs> But he heard nothing, and so judging from the impression of the seal and the lid, he thought there must be something precious inside, apparently so do many of you. To find out, he took his knife, and with a little trouble, he opened it. He turned it upside down, but nothing came out, which surprised him very much. He set it down in front of him, and while he was looking at it attentively, such a thick smoke came out that he had to step back a pace or two. This smoke rose up to the clouds and, stretching over the sea and the shore, formed a thick mist which astonished the fishermen. When all the smoke was out of the jar, it gathered itself together and became a thick mass which appeared a genie, twice as large as the largest giant. When he saw such a terrible looking monster, the fishermen would like to have run away but he trembled so much with fright, he could not move a step. Time out again. So, he finally decides to do the same thing you guys wanted to do, an open container. So he pulls out his knife and stabs it. Pops open the lid, and down. And when he turns it upside down, what comes out? Nothing. 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 And he was like, poopy socks. So he throws the container down and just stares at it, which apparently activates it, because what comes out then? Smoke. And that's where smoke. smoke, and then the smoke becomes a genie. And apparently, we all find out that genies like to vape. And so that's where the giant genie appears in front of him. Those of you who have experienced genies, what do genies do? Great. 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 three, you cannot kill anybody. You cannot wish to bring anybody back to life. You cannot harm anybody. Not love. And you can't wish for love. You can't wish for more wishes. I found a twist. If you, if you. Wish that anything that you can do anything. No, no. no. you ask for more gelatins. 
Well, no. one, you can no. never watch too much Aladdin. Exactly. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So, so you ask the genie to make any wish come true, no matter what. He's gonna have to grant you a wish because that's not in the rules. Then you wish for more wishes. Who? Julian is really gonna like our genie because our genie hates math and he's not good at counting. Like troll. No, and he has a whole reasons. different idea of what's going to happen. Alex. Genies love to troll. They do. They're just they gonna, he's, I guess genie's just gonna troll. Let's find oh, out. Oh, spell genie. So we have ours. Let's find out what our genie decides to do. What <clears throat> even, Great king of the genie! cried the monster in front of him. I will never again disobey you. At these words, the fisherman took courage. What is this you are saying, great genie? Tell me your history and how you came to be shut up in that vase. At this, the genie looked at the fisherman haughtily. Um, uh, Haughtily means, it's not like hot, like hot, uh, but haughtily, meaning you think you're all that in a bag of butt. If you were to run up and meet a Kardashian on the street, uh, if you can imagine the look they would give you when you were talking to them, that is haughtily. They're like, whoa, wait, <laughs> uh, no, uh, that's haughtily. Yeah. <clears throat> at this, the genie looked at the fisherman haughtily. Thou shalt speak to me more respectfully before I kill thee. Alas, why should you kill me? cried the fisherman. I just freed you. Have you already forgotten that? No, answered the genie. But that will not prevent thy death, and I am only going to grant thee one favor, and that is to choose the manner of thy death. But what have I done to you? asked the fisherman. I cannot treat you in any other way. And if thou would knowest why, listen to my story. Uh, one, our genie's not good at counting. How many wishes do you get? Three. 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 Wait, what are you one. One. Apparently you guys are not good at counting either. So he's only going to give one wish, which is like three, but four times less. And of that one wish, what is that wish going to be? The man so of the You get to choose how you're going to die. I want and that's where we get to find a little bit of backstory on why our genie okay. woke up a big grump grump. I would die a thousand years later. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully you can tell my difference between my genie voice and my fisherman voice. I know, they, they feel real close to each other. I rebelled against the king of the genie to punish me. He shut me up in this vase of copper and put on the leaden cover his seal, which is an enchantment powerful enough to prevent my coming out. Then he had the vase thrown into the sea. During the first period of my captivity, I vowed that if anyone should free me before a hundred years were passed, I would make him so rich, even his grandchildren would not be able to spend all his wealth. But that century passed, and no one freed me. In the second century, I vowed that I would give all the treasures in the world to my deliverer. But he never came. In the third century, I promised to make him a potent king, to be always near him, and to grant him three wishes every day. But that century passed, as the other two had done, and I remained in the same plight. At last, I grew angry at being captive for so long, and I vowed that if anyone would release me, I would kill him at once would only allow him to choose in what manner he should die. Die. So you see, as you have freed me today, choose in what way you will die. Die. Um, a quick time out again. Did you figure out how Genie got himself stuck in vase? Yeah, he rebelled. No. Mm-hmm. Like France. Re- nicely done. Uh, he rebelled. Sort of the student revolution, but instead of students, it was the Genie revolution. And he tried to revolt against the leader of the genies. And much like students find out during student revolution, bad things happen to you. And instead of getting grounded and sent to his room without a phone, he was grounded and put into a jar and thrown into the ocean. With a phone. Luckily, our fisherman does not like to die. Uh, do you guys know what a scheme is? Yes. Yeah. It's like something you do. It, no. Scheme? No. It's like a crime, but you, you see steal. Me? You're trying to say myself. 
Yeah. It's a plan. It's a plan. I'll go with a plan. That works for me. Now I understand where some of your guys' schemes go when you're like, breaking the law, doing bad things. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't have to be. But a scheme is a plan of some kind. Yeah. Of the like fisherman. Hi, Julian. Do you know the song Ski? I apologize. The fisherman was very unhappy. What an unlucky man I am to have freed you. I implore you, spare my life. I have told thee, it is impossible. Choose quickly, thou art wasting time. Oh, who's using the pronouns? Who? I don't know. Because who has power? Him. The fisherman. They're sure? both hymns. Yeah. The pronouns. What is him? What is her? What? <laughs> it can be, be her. It can be a they. Please. I'm sorry, I apologize for calling on you again. It, they, because... The fisherman Cat, began no. to devise a scheme. Okay, since I must die, before I choose the manner of my death, I ask you on your honor, you answer me truly one question. The genie, finding himself presented with such a positive response to his command, trembled and replied, Ask what thou wilt, but make it quick. Okay, okay. I wish to know if you really were in that base this whole time. Dare you swear it by the name of the great God? I do swear by that great name that I was, answered the genie. Huh, I can't really believe it, said the fisherman. That vase, this one, that has amazing Star Wars on it, could not even contain one of your feet. How could your whole body go in? No, I cannot believe it unless I see you do this incredible thing. <gasps> oh, I, oh I know what I see. Oh, you guys are as smart as a genie. What's going on? Is it possible, replied, replied the genie, that thou dost not believe me after the solemn oath I have taken? Truly not I, said the fisherman, nor will I believe you unless you go into the vessel again. Then the genie began to change himself into smoke, which, as before, spread over the sea and the shore, and which, then collecting itself together, began to go back into the vase slowly and evenly till there was nothing left outside. Then a voice came from the vase, which said to the fisherman, Well, unbelieving fisherman, here I am in the vase. Do you believe me now? The fisherman, instead of answering, quickly took the lid of lead and shut it down upon the vase. Acting it out for you. <clears throat> oh, 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 genie. Now it is your turn to beg my favor. But I am going to throw you into the sea from where I took you. And then I will build a house on the shore so I can warn fishermen who come to cast their nets here against fishing up such a wicked genie as thou art, who vows to kill the man who frees thee. At these words, the genie did all he could to get out, but he could not because of the enchantment of the lid. Then he tried to get out by cunning. Open the vessel. If you give me my liberty, I promise to satisfy thee till thy own happiness is fulfilled. Thou art a traitor replied the fisherman. I would deserve to lose my life if I were to such sort if I were such a fool as to trust thee. If I trust myself to thee, continued the fisherman, then I am sure you will surely betray me again in the future when it suits your needs. No you shall forever remain encased in this tomb. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, genie. Aw, I wanted him to die. No. So, what does our fisherman decide that he's going to do with the jar? Throw it back. The genie. Throw it. Whee! Throw it, back. Throw it back into the water to prevent the genie from getting him. Then, to prevent anyone in the future from being able to be attacked, how is he going to prevent future attacks? Because the house. house. To warn them. Brar? And then outside the house? Sign. Warn them. He has a little sign that says no genies. 
And so that is how. Oh, and who is using the archaic pronouns at the end? The fisherman. The fisherman. Because who has power? The fisherman. There you go. And so that becomes our story. Uh -huh. Let's see how much we were able to figure out together as we attempt to help you. Speaking of learning, I have learned not to call on certain kids. So character-wise, we have two characters. Manasfi, who are our two characters in the story? Um, the fisherman and the genie. Works for me. Fisherman, genie. Your description shouldn't be too hard because I don't think there's a lot of things you can use that would cover both of them. But you have to have something that would describe both. Or what a description for each of them. Josie. Um, like for the fisherman, four, and then for the genie, like large. That would work. I can see that. Yep. Yeah. The for the for the fisherman, old. For the genie, angry. What's the only problem with saying old for the fisherman? Uh, the genie's older. I mean, the genie's older than him since he's apparently several centuries old. But other than that, I like your thinking, Julian. Um, for the fisherman, I put Fisher. And then for the genie, I put bush ranger. That'd be good. I mean, if you put the fisherman goes fishing, it'd be better. If you just put that he's a fisher, I'd probably come back in church. He fishes. That's, that's kind of a little trottery. At least saying he goes fishing is a little bit better. For the setting, I think you guys already got the first two because we went through that all the time. A long time ago. What Once upon a time, time, time of night. What time of day? Night morning. There you go. For the where is it taking place? Area next to a body of water. Beach next to sea. I don't know, the beach works for me. I also threw out the Mideast uh, because I figure if we're dealing with genies, we don't have a lot of genies around here. I see a lot of water bottles. I don't see a lot of genies popping out and punching you in the face. I think if that were to happen, then that might be more of an America issue. But I think for the most part, you guys seem to drink water. I mean, don't get me wrong. I see kids spilling water all the time. But I don't think you can blame that on a genie. I think that may just be a you. What if the genie is water? Yeah. And you just drink it? For the plot! Just Rahul. The We're going to do one and five. So, Rahul. No! Wait, I've had prophet. Oh, wait. There there right. Rahul. So, what is the very first thing that happens in the story? Uh, the fisherman goes out. I don't think. Oh, Works for me? Yeah, did the genie get you? Move your paper, too. Can I go to the bathroom and get paper, too? Sorry, Sia. No. Can you just have it in my pocket? I'm scared. What else does he have in his pocket? You act like this is the first time I've been around seven graders. I think it is. <laughs> What, the yep. fact that seventh graders are going to have issues? Yes, I can see that future. Just like I can see the fact that the sun's going to come up and the kids are going to lose points. I can see so many bits in the future. <laughs> Good job, Rod. Yes, I put the fisherman is only going to toss his net four times. Something about the fisherman and what he's doing when he goes out there. Then, jumping back, Crawford, to number five, what's the last thing that's going to happen in the story? Fisherman traps the genie in the vessel and throws it in the sea. Works for me. Fisherman tricks genie back in a canister. Very much the same. I'll give you number three. Fisherman discovers genie in canister. Wouldn't that be two? No, because a thing happens between those. Miriam! Are you ready for number two? Yeah. What do you got, Miriam? Um, he finds the gold pot. Works for me. Final cast, catch this metal canister. Or base, pot, container, whatever works for you. Callie, are you going for four? Let's see, three, Fishman discovers genie in canister. Five, Fishman tricks genie back in. So four would be? Four is the genie threatens the fisherman. Perfect, there you go. Like story. Genie says he will kill. And that breaks it down into the five parts. I have faith in you. Told you, once you figure out one and five, I give you three, it becomes pretty easy. And then we're getting ready to jump to point of view next. Let's see how well we do with that. Once you think you have point of view, you can low key throw fingers at me, and we'll see how well we're doing. I see those of you who have fingers who have gotten that far. 
I agree, between on third person, between limited and omniscient, is there a scene the fisherman is not in? If there's a scene without fishermen, it's omniscient. All right, no one seems to be wanting to prove the thing. All right, I agree with you, it's limited. It's on the fisherman the entire time. <laughs> For your theme, it should not say genie, because your theme should be something that anybody can learn. And aside from Mate, who just got haunted by a genie, I think the rest of us don't have to worry. Me? Oh, was that Sienna? <laughs> yeah. I apologize, Mate. I thought I saw the water bottle over there. I just assumed that the genie haunted you. Sienna, I had no idea that you had genie issues. Now we've learned. So, so again, except for Sienna, who has learned from the genie in the bottle that, like Christina Aguilera, Don't. came back to haunt us, your theme should apply to people today in some way. Don't cast your fish. Read. Don't fall for tricks. How does that connect to the story? Because at the end it even says, I should deserve to lose my life. Wait. Yeah, I should deserve to lose my life if I were such a fool as to trust thee. So you're saying the fisherman doesn't fall for a trick? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. No worry. Alex? Um, don't, don't be like really curious and open mysterious boxes and containers. And, and how does that apply? Um, so if you're like curious about something and like it looks really ominous, and like you, you think you shouldn't do it. You should probably not do it. Just a little metal container. It didn't look that ominous. Curiosity killed the cat. And apparently, almost Alex. Rigor. Um, I said like don't be gullible. How so? Um, like, um, like don't open the thingy. Oh, I Actually, that's a theme I teach in my class. That don't be gullible. That's why I have the poster over there that says "Don't be gullible" on it. Wait, where? Where? <laughs> 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 Good job to those of you who got to laugh at the others. I went for strength doesn't always work. Oh. There's kids who are still getting it just now. They're like, I still don't see it. It's behind the other poster. Uh, again, you don't have to have my exact one as long as yours works. I went strength doesn't always win the battle because the genie was stronger but not smarter. Mate. Can I say mine? Yeah, what you got, Mate? Anger issues doesn't solve problems. How so? Because the the, the genie was very angry, and at the end, it didn't go much so well. I would actually like that one. I think that's solid, too. Matthew! Half of brains of our mom. Yeah, that's actually what I had originally. That would work, too. Work smarter, not touch. harder. How's that work? Work smarter, yeah. not harder. Which character works smarter, not harder? Because uh, he could have fought him using hard work, but instead he tricked him. <laughs> sure, I'll roll with that one, too, then. Callie? Be patient or an old fisherman will come and trap you in a seal again. Can you go That's back? That's true. That may be a little too specific. Can and you to go answer back? your question, no, Durbles, I have faith in you figuring stuff out. Then, because you just have your own thing. Internal conflict. Fisherman definitely has a big decision the fisherman has to make in the story. Let's see what, how far Felipe can figure out fisherman's choice with his, wait, First off, Felipe, before you answer, Jolie, what word do we have to use in an internal conflict? And what word can we not use? Good job. All right, Felipe, what decision does the fisherman have to make? Uh-huh. Works for me. Nice one. I went accept death at the end or find a way to live. Either one would work. I think that's a solid option, too. And then Sienna, since you seem to have a natural connection to genies, the genie also has a big decision to make. And what decision does the genie have to make? Listen to the fisherman or, uh, or just kill him. That'll work for me too. I went kill silly fisherman or let him live. What? Ricardo. For the internal conflict, can we just simple, simplify it to die or live? Who's making that decision? Fisherman. Yeah, that'll work. Do you stop that yet? And external conflict, the last big thing, Madison. 
What word? Hi, Madison. What word do we have to use in external conflict? Person. And so, what two things fight each other? You literally just said the words you have to use. So, what what is the answer again? That would be the way. There you go. And then, don't forget at the end, read tell me why that's important to the story. Because well done. You got through it. Go, you guys. Well, you can't just write as the main idea. Why is that the main idea? He talks about what? Why is that? Because they're going to go play hockey against each other?